traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, everyone. Bowser Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesavento's hour. And Larry must be having a great time. What a market this has been. I mean, whew, 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 especially if you're into commodities. Look at this. The, the wheat contract. Uh, oh, I've got this on the one-minute chart. That wasn't the point. Let's just go back to the daily chart. I want to talk about these charts in a moment here, the E-mini. E but let's just go to this right here. Look at this. This is this is corn. Uh, corn is in a rectangle formation in the monthly chart. It's in an arch formation in the – those letters are, are missing because this gets smoothed out. It's a continuous contract. I'm going to drag them down. They're, they're in the exact right – uh, horizontal, uh, no, vertical space, but not the horizontal. So in this case, I'm always looking for uh, peak Ds, peak Ds where other things can happen. In the Chapman wave, the fourth highest peak, and lo and behold, look what we've got. We've got peak A, peak B, peak C, and then a peak D with a down arrow in the corner. Corner's dropping sharply, it's making the Chapman wave U-shaped formation, the pattern I call the dreaded H. At 583, the low round about 566. We're looking as if the continuous contract wants to go down there. It's repelled. It tried to hold the 200 period moving average, just went right through it. Now we're going to be watching that closely. We've got um, corn. Oh, that is corn. Let's go to soybean. Soybean, look at this continuous contract S. Yes. Also, the arch formation. This uh, uh, fails at a peak B, and the weekly chart is just making a big arch formation. There's the rectangle as well on the soybean continuous contract monthly chart, and look at wheat. That's wheat. That's wheat at an Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down in the monthly chart. It's, of course, it's a monthly chart. It takes months to do that, but basically it's gone like an uppercase A. Look at this in the weekly chart. There's a dreaded H. It fails. It kept coming down. Did the lowercase H that goes to a lowercase M. And it failed, it came down, and here it is plunging down 13 and a half today, 624. That makes it's even touching the low that was made back in 2020, June of 2020. The low was in the continuous contract, 622. Here we are, 628. Unbelievable how these things can happen. So this looks like the Eiffel Tower. Then I was reminded, Chuck asked me if I'd, I'd do this. He had said, oh, it looks like it looks like the Chrysler building yesterday when I was talking about one of these patterns. So um, it's fascinating. The Chrysler building, in 1929, it was the summer of 29, I think it was maybe August, uh, when the Empire State Building had its plans passed and uh, it was going to become the world's tallest building. So what happened up until then, uh, you had the Chrysler building, and there was one other building that was a little uh, shorter, but Chrysler was going to beat it. So the Chrysler building, which is actually a, just a fabulous design. Oh, I should have put it up here, uh, Chrysler building. Uh, I wonder if I can do that. Let me just see. I'll go here, and I'll just type in Chrysler building. Chrysler. Building and there it is. I'm sure. Yep. Come on. Here we go. Yeah. Chrysler Building. Is it a big picture or so? Oh yeah. A whole bunch of them. Let's just go to this one here. I want one that shows the roof. That shows. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Isn't that amazing? Look at that. So that's that's the top. I never. I we, we drive. You know, when you when you drive when we come from Boston and we go to New York. Uh, we usually go to um, Brooklyn, but we often go to Manhattan as well. But on the way, as you get to the Whitestone Bridge, you start seeing Manhattan. And then it's like a zigzag. And as you get closer and closer and closer and closer, you, you see Manhattan 
right up front. And then you're right opposite, uh, you're uh, sort of di um, you're in line with the Empire State and you're looking across this fabulous and you can see the cries of Bullsey. Well, what happened was that there are fantastic pictures of the cries of the building. Who was the, the, there was this photographer, this woman in the 1920s, white, uh, Mar Margaret Bo Bork White, that was her name. And she has these incredible pictures of the goggles, and she's actually outstanding right on the edge. They're fantastic pictures. So the Empire State Building came along, and um, now just as I'm about to tell the story, I can't remember. It, it was the Empire State that had this tower that they had. You couldn't really see it. And then, like in the last day, as it was going up, they hoisted this tower, and it just beat out the cries of the building. So, um, but isn't it, this is, it's a beautiful building. You can't see the gargoyles. Maybe I'll show you gargoyles over here. Why do they show you gargoyles? Uh, no, they don't show you any gargoyles over there. Oh, yeah, there you are. Okay, I think you, there you are. Well, you can't really see them. They're gargoyles that stick out over there. Anyway, so that's the story. So the, it, it's really a lovely, oops, I just did something that I shouldn't have done. Oh, little wild mouse took my, there it is. Okay, everything's set. So, okay, so that's the empire. That's actually almost like the Chrysler building with that very long steeple right there. So, um, yeah, so I always say that the um, Eiffel Tower, the pattern that goes straight up and straight down, looks like an uppercase A. That, a, that's the one that you've got to be careful of. So, okay, now let's go back to our story. What we're looking at here are the patterns that I, I talk about all the time. I show these patterns. They repeat, yes, like the fractal of human nature, it doesn't matter the time frame. If it's going to be repeated, it'll be repeated in any time frame, the, the particular patterns. But there's a technique that I've developed over the years that I like to uh, mention. It's not always easy to get it because things happen and maybe take you out and then you have to get back in. But there are days in the last year we've had, oh, I could, not dozens, but many dozens of days where if you got the low that was early in the morning, uh, and early in the morning, let's just say uh, if you're up at about 6.30, sometimes a little bit before, but then you get the 8.30 news report, economic news report. But if you're able to take a low and click on, uh, for uh, instance, mm -hmm. you're trading the uh, whatever futures, uh, E-mini or the, the NASDAQ, whatever futures or the YM, the Dow, there are days where you could go just two clicks, one click in the morning. And as long as that nine period moving average is holding above the 14 period exponential moving average, you can stay in that position. And here it is, 118, one, uh, is it? 113 uh, Eastern time on Thursday, the 27th of April. And at this particular time, that 10 minute chart is showing you that that nine period moving average is way above the 14. So I use this as a very integral part of my analysis. In my CD, Introducing the Chapman Wave Methodology, my CD book, I don't talk about the 914 because I developed it a little bit after that. It's become a very, a very important, almost all the other techniques remain intact. The left side, right side, price, time match, that's bar symmetry, we'll talk about that. But look, look how fascinating this is. You've got a rectangle formation that lasted quite a while. Look at this rectangle for formation after the cup formation. And you were trapped within like six six points in the E-mini. And then slowly it started to creep up, creep up, creep up. And now in the one minute chart, it's even moving very nicely. Dow's up 330, S&P's up 54. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman City for the Larry Pizzavento's show. He's in Las Vegas right now. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more, and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618. A little Mozart before we continue. Here we go. We've got, let, let me show you this pattern. So a long rectangle. In, in my work, I like to look at different patterns. One of them is, uh, well, two of them is the very narrow rectangle, long rectangle formation, where you're just within a tight trading band, you go to the top, you think it's going to break out, and it go, oh, you know, it turns around and comes back down. You think it's going to break down, you think, oh, it turns back, and it bounces along within this rectangle for a long time. <clears throat> A lot longer than your patience and sometimes a lot longer than your money. The large rectangle has other connotations. Well, here's, here's the small rectangle. Look at this gold chart. This is a 10-minute chart from about 8 to 20 last night. It stayed in this rectangle for 12 hours. And at 8 o'clock, it pops up to this. Look, first it goes to a peak D. We're always looking for peak Ds in the Chaffin wave. That's where other things can happen. It can recycle, go on, or it can, that's where you get your deepest correction. There's your first D and there's your second D. And then it held, held the 200 period exponential moving average and then bounced where? Right to the top and just broke out of it. And the rule of thumb that I have is that within a rectangle formation, let me just draw this in. I'll just grab one of these quickly uh, if I can actually find it. Uh, where, where did it go? Uh, did I lose it? Oh. Huh. Uh-oh. All right, I'll just draw it in. Oh, there it is. So within this the rectangle, if the price goes to a D, E, or F above after being in the rectangle for a while and then takes out the midpoint of the narrow rectangle, be careful because not only could it break and test the low that was made, in this case that's the low that we're looking at, but it could actually break down and go sharply below it. Well, it suddenly popped up with the economic news this morning at 8.30. Pop, it goes to an E, fails, and then now it's turned around. Now what we've got is you see this little fulcrum over here? It becomes like a little propeller shaft right there, right there. So we've got a move down, held steady for a little while, broke down, and now it's moving back up. So this whole area is going to be the resistance. If it takes it out, 
then it should go to try to get back to the 2002 200-period moving average in the 10-minute chart. It's already in leg C. The technicals are concurring. They're good. So it has a good chance to bounce. So I wanted to show you some patterns that repeat over and over. Let me just go back to this one here, something I wanted to discuss. I discussed this. <clears throat> I th was, it on my, was it on my show today? I can't remember. But I think um, I, I put this in. I don't know if I even discussed it because my show ends at, ele at uh, 11 o'clock. And this is, yeah, 1020. So I said I put in peak A, peak B. And all of a sudden it popped up and I said, I'm going to use, oh, I know what I did. I said, I'm going to use this as a phantom peak right here when I get two parallel highs. I, and, and there was a little hiccup in the on-balance volume or the relative strength, but to concur that that says, although it trades in 25 cent increments, there could have been a, a B there. Then what I do is I put in a phantom peak. I call the next one, the next letter in the alphabet C. And then it takes me to D. D is where you can expect other things to happen. If I'm wrong, what will happen is it goes to D, pulls back, and then very quickly it goes to that C, the missing C. Uh, I'm sorry, it goes to the missing D. So this is a phantom peak. This is not really peak D because I've used a phantom peak to say that, that that's really what it should be. So what happened was you did. You got a very sharp pullback. I mean, this is the S&P, right? Many. So it goes from 41.15 down to 41.04. That was the quickest and deepest move it had since the 8.30. But then it had this fabulous move. Look, the nine period moving average held above the 14. The MACD came down but didn't cross negative. And then all of a sudden there was this pop up and that became the real D. That became the, the real C and the phantom wasn't needed. So what I'd said at that time is if you're long, take a little bit off, you can always put it back because uh, it is only a phantom B, and sometimes when the technicals are still strong, it'll come back to the D. Well, it went to the D, and now it's gone to an E, one bar with a slightly lower high that makes a peak E, and now we've got a floating F. This could even be an alternate count, but there's no need to do anything there because we're looking at shorter term frames, time frames. So I want you to mention how long a rectangle formation can last. Look at this. We did one the other day. Now we've got another one, a little wider, but look at this. Within the context of 4 o'clock on the, what was that? Four, it was 4 o'clock on Thursday. Last Thursday, it went for a long time. This one here went for a long time. Now look what we've got. On the 26th, that, today is the 27th. So yesterday, and just after the close, there was that, was that the close? 4.20. Yeah, there was that sharp pullback, sharp pullback, pullback, and then all of a sudden, oh no, that was the close right there. So that was the, uh, that was the close on the twenty uh, third. Oh, I misread that. Oh, we went all the way back. Sorry, we went all the way back to the twenty third. So look at the range that we were in a range. We broke under the range, and then we went right back into the range. And now for the first time, we've broken above that. And this dashed line goes back from even earlier on in the last week where that was a midpoint of, of, a, of a long rectangle formation. So these patterns just repeat over and over and over again. And I, I wanted to show you what I'm looking at here in the, um, and I'm going to be doing a workshop. Uh, it's basically, a, this is for subscribers to my opening course, a webinar workshop. Uh, let me see if I can find this right here. I'm usually a little slow in doing these things, but I'm going to do it right now. There it is. So opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman. Uh, this is going to be a 90-minute subscriber webinar, May the 3rd at 4 o'clock to 5.30. It will be archived. If you can't listen to it, you can listen to it later on. Wednesday, uh, this coming Wednesday, sectors, stocks, and Chapman Wave techniques to focus on for the coming months because I think this is going to be a fascinating few months coming up. We've already started to see the divergence between a caterpillar tanking and uh, a meta, the old Facebook skyrocketing Microsoft. And even within the tech sector, you've got some stocks that are just stuck. They just can't get out of their own way and others that are really coming to light. And I want to focus on that because we want to be building up a portfolio for the next couple of months. And what we're looking at is which stocks and sectors worked in the first quarter but could now stall. That might be the energy. I don't know yet. We have to wait for the month to finish. We've got another day to go and then we'll assess. Uh, and which are ready to break upside. 
can this rotational market finally see the tech sector lead to a sustained move to the upside? This is today the tech sector is leading. This is, I think, this is a really important session. So there are all bunch, but you know, what technical aspects in the Chapway methodology are suggesting strength continues into 2023? Uh, are techniques applicable to the short-term analysis just as are they as helpful? For the longer term, is it possible to find dividend stocks? We've got a dividend stock. It's a really it's suspect because it's in an area that oh, is this going to work? But if it starts to garner upside action, we, we're in a profit right now. But it's the dividend that we're really looking at. Dividend, I believe, comes in early May. Um, that's really what we're looking at. Are we able to? see this break to the upside by just about five or six points from where it is and that'll say wonderful now we've got a really good support level and we can get the dividend anyway and low price stocks very single digit stocks are they ready to move so i'm going to do something else as we're going into the break i'm just going to notate this and say there's your leg d in the one minute chart holding this they are holding up they are holding above the the black 14 period moving average, we've got the green holding. And is this where we're going to get another little divergence uh, pullback? We'll see. I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. And what I've been fo focusing on for a little while now is the SMHs, the semiconductors. I like to think always that, well, first of all, let me just say, I, I believe semiconductor chips and the whole of the 21st century has taken the place 
in a large way, but also being complemented by oil. In other words, oil, as the 1900s began, oil became more and more important. And then it per, it was pervasive. It, it, it impacted almost every economic form that you could think of. Well, the chips have just done that over the last, this metamorphosis over the last, uh, say, 40 years. And um, I always like to think that where the chips go, the market goes. You know, the uh, estimations made their high uh, January of 2022 at 318.69, the market factors semiconductor ETF. <clears throat> well, it's been pulling back very sharply. Uh, it's gone to the 166 level, cut, almost cut in half. <clears throat> and then what happens is you get this really good rally, 50% rally. Now it's starting to take a breather. So one of the things I looked at and one of the reasons why we actually went short the day after the high in the S&P at that peak F, leg F, made a peak F the, on the uh, uh, 19th of April. This is a couple of days after the Dow made its high. <clears throat> and one of the reasons was the manner in which the highs were made as the stochastic was a little bit weaker, the on-balance volume made a little triple top high. <clears throat> The, if you look at the, where, where does, uh, can I do that now? No, I'll do that a little later. And if you're looking at the technicals, there were a lot of indications to say that that spike to 415.72 didn't really have the core uh, fundamentals, uh, the technicals, I should say, that normally it would have. Look how strong that leg D was. Look how, look at the, the, the on balance volume. Uh, running sharply, the MACD, look how strong it was, the green over the four, the red, look at the green over the black, there's the nine over the 14. So that just said to me, we're getting real close to some kind of a top. So we shorted uh, via the SPXS, we got a position in that, and today we took some of that off. And one of the things I'm looking at is, I like to do left side, right side price time match. It's a little bit easier to see if I go to this chart right here. I wonder if I can do that. This is what I show subscribers to so open and call every day. I do an analysis of the, of, the, of the market, of the Dow. This is the daily chart and a daily chart with other indicators, the same chart but with moving averages here and the MACD and stochastic on balance volume. He has a 120 minute chart. It shows you there's a chap we've automated support level at 33,222. And what I said, we are ready for a bounce. And one of the things I was looking at is, you see this bar right here and you see the midpoint at on the 14th of April at 34,082, leg D, uh, at a peak D, other things can happen. Well, I drew in the number of bars, this is bar symmetry, the number of bars on the left side to the number of bars on the right side and then from the previous peak on the left side, I drew a chain wave inside wedge target support line, dash line. Well, look what happened. We went right to the line yesterday, right to the price, 33,225, three points above, two points actually above that automated chain wave support level. And then we bounced. But that nine period moving average still is not negative. And it's still telling me that there's inside, so there's residual strength, there's strength there. The big question I have is, I have to do a good analysis. I'll be away tomorrow. I'll be back on Tuesday. But uh, yeah, I mean, talking about yeah, TFNN. Is this a new buy signal? Are we about to rally sharply? And that to me is a really big question. You've got the semiconductors. Let me just go back to the SMHs right here to show you a very interesting candle. A nice turnaround candle. Look at that. The day is young. Anything can happen between now at, uh, what is it, uh, 134. <laughs> Anything can happen. But look what's happened. You've turned around. You didn't get to the 200 period moving average. Here I, I had to, I couldn't use the plumb line in the middle to get bar symmetry. I used this candle right here. And we've got to it almost to the day. We got to the level that I looked at as key support. And that's 239. 0.78, that bar right there. And we had the chapter wave inside wedge target, and it hit the target line and went under it. So, and the on-balance volume is turning around. The stochastics at 8%, that's really poor. And the relative strength is trying to rally. 
and the MACD is still very negative. So it says that if the semiconductors are going to rally, it's going to be a process. Either that or there's a spectacular rally that just gets unwound right now into the end of the month, which will be tomorrow. And then we go into the beginning of May and there's, there's new buying as money has come in and it keeps moving up. But the weekly chart in the semiconductors is not bad at all. Look at this. The S&P weekly chart has made a cup formation. It hasn't broken down and held the 14 period moving average is sp spiked above it. And this coming month, May, is where we're going to see is there a chance that this inside track repellent zone, one of the Chapman Wave techniques that I'll be discussing in my webinar for subscribers, is that going to be taken out? Are we going to start a leg C outside of this very long-term resistance level? That's the question I have. I love the action that I'm looking at right now, but you cannot be deceived because there's still some, some technical actions that are not taking place. And if you look at the QQQ, the very weakest three days ago, when it did this pattern called the dreaded H, when it went underneath the left side low, and then the second day, it couldn't get back in. But today, it's spiking way above. And the nine period moving average, which was green, for one day went pink, and now it's back to green. So, and look at the weekly chart of the QQQs. That's that's like a, a positive, not really a cup and handle, but that's really a positive sideways con digestive phase. So I'm not ruling out the fact that what we're looking at right now is in fact, first of all, short covering, because I think there must have been, we must have seen massive shorts. I would not be surprised if this rally can continue a little longer. And if it does, at worst, we might be looking at a sideways move, a very choppy sideways move. At best, we might be breaking out. That's going to make it very important for the close tomorrow at 4 o'clock. So with that said, <coughs> excuse me, I want to also look at something else. Within the context of the different patterns that are unfolding right now, Look at the weekly QQQ nine period moving average so far above the 14 period moving average. Look at the MACD, how strong it is. Look at the stochastic. I love when the stochastic's flat and at 93%. So um, I like what I'm seeing. At this particular point, uh, we don't have a position in the QQQs, but actually it turns out that it was one of the weakest all of a sudden because of what? Meta. Facebook, I can't say meta, it's just, it doesn't even sound right. Facebook, um, look at this. That is a fantastic move to the outside. Look at Microsoft, the oldie. In 2000, it was the real winner. Then it became the real loser. Then it metamorphed. It went all the way to 349, November of 2021, down to the uh, 200 area, and now it's the 303. Big move up. Kind of like you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. 
These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Folks, Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesaventus. Our Larry is in Las Vegas. <clears throat> Must be having a great deal of fun with markets like this, especially those commodities that we were looking at a little while ago. Um, I just want to change this color right here, green. So this is the Chapman Wave inside wedge target repellent zone or resistance line right here. I usually make a dash green on the way up. Red on the way down, dash red on the way down. This is green and dash style. There we go. So what we're looking at in this particular pattern is uh, this is Amazon. So Amazon has this huge gap, peak C, which failed, uh, going to the 114 area. Was that 114? Yep, round number. I forgot to type it in. Oh, I did type it in, then I lost it. So 114 round number high. I always look at round numbers. And what happened was it turned around and it plummeted down to the 80s. And now it's gone very steadily. Peak A, peak B, peak C, D, pulls back under the 14 under the 14 period moving average. But look, it's still green. The nine is still green. And now it's in a new leg F. But I, I would consider there's a chance that it's an alternate count. I don't need to do that right now. I just need to know that it's rallying, that the technicals are good. So it's already anticipating being up 5.56 at 110.56. Some really good positive news. If there's any, any, you know, for the market, for the down now, almost 400 points up, the S&P up 62, and the QQQ up 7.7. Uh, uh, 7 .7. I would say that it would be Amazon and some others, anyone else coming out today or tomorrow morning, that just is horrible to really tank the stock. And that would say, and if you're looking at Amazon at 188.65 in July of 2021, going down to 81 four months ago and five months ago in October, and here it is trying just to get a leg B above um, 114, um, that shouldn't be too hard to do. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, well, the daily chart is all very strong. Say so it's how stocks react to the report, to the earnings report that is important. It's not the earnings report in itself. It's how do they react? Well, it's in a rectangle formation with a cup pattern within it. And that's saying that the everything here is pointing positively. So, so far, all the technicals, it's not how... We can do all the analysis we want, but it's how the market perceives whatever they say today. But as it stands right now, Amazon looks like it wants to get to that round number 114, um, and that'll be really important. 
uh, in the meantime, but it's got tremendous support. Unless something horrible goes on, it's got tremendous support between 104 and 102 in the in the over the over the shorter term. So I just wanted to show you the patterns that I'm looking at here. So so far, daily, weekly are very, very, very good. The monthly chart needs a lot of work. I mean, that's just beginning its turn to the upside. Now I know I wanted to do something. I, I wrote it down. I said I'd do that. I'd do that. I've done that. I've done that. I want you to show you, look, jets. You know, there's talk, if anybody's flown recently, you know how, how all the planes are full. It's not so easy. And some airlines are actually finally giving, reporting good, good profits. Um, whether that can be sustained or not, we're not sure. But jets is the U.S. Global Jets ETF. Look at this monthly chart. Just using this one technique, jump wave inside track repellent zone, Look how the price has made this arch formation. So far, it's holding nicely above the 11.25 low of March. Uh, Jets is the symbol. And it just hasn't had enough power to break. So if in this, this summer, and it needs to be a very, now we need speed. We can't, this can't be slow. It's got to be really quickly. By, by the third week of May, if Jets is still stuck in between uh, 18 and 17, that really is not a good sign. But if... All of a sudden, we're looking at it, and it's filled this Grand Canyon sharp move down, and it's filled in and gone to the 19.50, then 20 area, preferably within the next two weeks. That's going to be a really good sign. So I'm watching this because it's a really good clue to have the transportation index. And our transportation these days is not simple. It's got Federal Express, it's got UPS, and these look at UPS. Let me just see UPS. Um, look at that big gap down, huge from the 196 area to 175. So that's the shipping part of it. Uh, Federal Express, Federal Express, here we go. Look at that arch formation. But now what's really interesting is that the IYT also has some other areas. It has, say, CSX, which is the... Um, this is the rails, CSX rails, trying its best to rally, trying to break this weekly inside track repellent zone. So there's a lot going on, and the XLF is really important. The XLF is the financials. And look at that. Made a peak D. It's pulling back, having a good day today. It's up 43 cents. Woohoo. Up 1.34% to 32.69. But until these financials and the AI, AI, AI uh, I should mention we were long from the 45s from way back in 2020. It's run up all the way to 116, and that's it's pulled back. But this is really important to see the brokerage area start to move very sharply as well. So um, there are a lot of things to look at. But if you have enough stocks, that's all you need is just enough stocks that are really powering higher. Um, that's what can drive, even if it's three to four, five stocks in each sector, that's really a major stock. Let's look at Apple. I don't know when Apple comes out with earnings. I think it's probably next week or something like that. Nice move above the inside track repellent zone. Look at this monthly. It's almost about to break in a cup formation to the upside at 167. If it can start to trade on a weekly basis in the 173 area, that's going to help the monthly. 182 is the high. I mean, 182.95. You're 160, what are we, 167 right now? So we are 20 points. We're looking at, um, yeah, 182.7. No, less than that. Away from an all-time high. So there is leadership as well as some stocks that really got hammered and are just, uh, just not working. They're just not working. So I want to also show you the Bitcoin BTC. BTC is having a, a good day today. It went to a peak F. It made the arch formation, held the left side low. It's trying to bounce. The weekly chart did this bar symmetry where you've got the number of bars on the left side equal to the number of bars on the right side, trying to get to the left side high that I chose. And it's not really a cup. I choose to make it a cup from that high right there, 22 uh, 32,340. It went all the way to a peak D, but it's still struggling. It's got until the week of the 12th of May to get to 32,340, but it's actually doing quite nicely. It's just had a nice consolidation. And I would not rule it out because if you've got people looking for alternate sources of, of um, at least 
placing your money somewhere. You might not have the greatest faith in it, but you say, well, I want to be in it because it's part of the whole idea of currencies. This is maybe a place to be. I mean, it's had a huge move from 60, it's double from 16,000 to 32,000. So it's not a place to ignore. One other thing, as we're going to go out, I wanted to show you uh, the TLT. The TLT Bitcoin stuck in a range. You see this rectangle? It can stay between this rectangles high and lows for quite a while. I'll be back in a moment for the final sector. That was a 420. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back. So uh, this is Basil Chapman. Uh, as I said, I won't be doing my show at 10 o'clock tomorrow with my Tiger Technicians Hour. But um, I'll be back on Monday and uh, for my subscribers, <clears throat> my weekly overview will have to be Sunday. <clears throat> Sunday, uh, I'll do that. But most importantly, I am very impressed. EQT, this is EQT, natural gas and hydrocarbon, made this V-shaped formation very strong. And that's what I'm saying, even within sectors, where this is a sector that's had some really uh, uh, um, tough stocks that have really been stuck, this is acting very well. So this is what I want you to do just as we're about to wrap up. This is a very impressive session. For the nine period moving average to start instead of deflecting higher and moving higher, you'd have to see almost all of this candle given back within three days. That means the low today 
of 33,000, let me just see what that is, uh, 33,374, uh, uh, that you'd have to see that taken out. More importantly is that the weekly chart is improving here, even though it's gone to the inside track repellent zone, at least it got there. And the week is still young. We've still got Friday to go, and we could give back some of it. Normally, on a session like this, you'd expect the last hour of trading, if there is another gain, you'd give back some of that uh, in the following session and then try to move back up. So it's going to be very important. But what I'm looking at here is that the technicals I'm following are suggesting there's still residual strength. The only question I have, and we'll know about this in the next day or two, has this begun another move to the upside that's going to be the breakout move now rather than continuing lower? Even though you've got the weak semiconductors, you've got the weak financials, are there enough stocks to do that and then to, to garner even more buying? That's a decision to make. I am looking at uh, certainly in our portfolio for subscribers. So far, things are very nice. And uh, But in the meantime, back at the ranch, what we've got to look at is what do we see as follow through with Friday's close in the April candle, the monthly candle? That's going to be really important. Have a great rest of the day. Stay tuned for great programming. And uh, I will see you on Monday myself. Check out my opening call on my webinar coming up Wednesday. Check the front page of TFN. Have a great rest of the day.